Look here, Nick, you most likely have been to many parties during your stay at Yale, but nothing holds a candle to the Yale Club. The Yale Club was the most exciting place to go back then. Way better than any party Gatsby's ever hosted. I've never been to the Yale Club. I'm not sure this is my crowd. Nonsense, Nick. If I enjoy it, you'll surely enjoy it too. I'm not so sure. Not sure? You have no life in you? Cheer up. You don't mind a little alcohol, do you? No, not at all. Good, because there's going to be a lot of it. Oh man, I can't wait. Oh Nick, whatever you hear in here, don't go telling your friends, if you have any that is. If the newspaper got a wind of what's going on in here, it would become a huge problem that no one wants, okay? I understand. Perfect. Now let's go in. That's why I never buy any stuff from Gucci, mate. I expect to spend thousands of dollars, but instead I'm spending a little bit of hundreds. So appalling. And even Rolls Royce asked me if I want to put wooden edges on my car. Do I even look like I'm in the Middle Ages? Put Irish wood and let me leave, please. The audacity. You know, James, I feel like I should run for president. I have the current one in my pocket right now, and I'll pay all those filthy commoners to vote for me. Don't you have to be American? But that's the thing, laddie. You mean money's American. Is that your car out there, mate? Ah, uh, yeah, it's a Type 35. It goes 0 to 60 in just 6 seconds. Wow. You know, she looks kind of worn down. Well, yeah, I can always fix her, but I swear to you, the next time my Type 35 breaks down, I'm gonna run straight up to the deal and punch him straight in the jaw. That thing cost me two millions, and I'm not about to drive a vehicle that cannot go faster than 100 miles per hour. Absolutely useless. It's fine. I can, I can just buy one new one anyways. I know how you feel, laddie. Me broker just told me that I'm only making a monthly revenue of 1.5 million instead of my actual 2 million. You know, I was just about to sock him in the face as well. I mean, how am I supposed to buy me island now? Duffy. I mean, I have the yacht, but not the correct one at that. I sent my wife to do one thing and she can't even do that. How hard is it to find a 20,000 square foot boat? Incredible. Duff. I mean, it's, it's incredible, you know? I mean, I give all these people jobs and all I get is 1.5 million dollars back. That's, that's nothing. You know what, I'll pay for you to shut up. James, I can lend you a car I got last year. I haven't driven it since I bought it. And Duffy, good luck with the island. Well, Tom, you come in here and immediately start ripping on me. You know I don't need your hand-me-downs. You know what, I could possibly buy a whole car company if I want to. And it's not just an island, mate. It's Ireland. Don't worry, James. You know it's all in good spirit. Anyways, this is Nick. He went to Yale around the same time as us. Uh, yeah, I did. The name's James. James Charles. It's a Fiona. Pleasure, buddy. It's nice to meet the both of you. You too, mate. So, Nick, what do you do for a living? Are you a banker? You look like a waiter from Mars. Hey, be nice to your child now, Duffy. I'm just making jokes. Call me a willies, mate. I'm Mr. O'Don. I work in the bonds business. Nothing much. Bonds, eh? Bitch, get good business over there, chap. I'm well off. Do, do you know any noise receptionists I can spoil? I mean, me wife's been driving me crazy. I just, I, I'm just trying to rile her up, you know what I mean? Well, no, I don't know any receptionists. <laughs> it's a shame. You know, Nick, all you have to do, you have to make as many girlfriends as you can, because once you get hitched, they're all gone like that. But, but like, I can afford to keep them all, right? kind of hard. Anyways, are you one of those West Eggers? Well, I suppose you can call me that, yeah. I bet you think high of yourself, mate. You and your lousy neighbors. Especially that idiot Gatsby with his huge mansion his disgusting parties. You know, if he does have one thing right, it's his booze, though. Hold on, you've been to one of his parties? I just got drunk and wandered, mate. I'll tell you what. The only thing Gatsby got right is his car. Oh my god. I need a drink if I have another aneurysm. You know what? I've had at least three strokes of you listening to you talk about your stupid island. Idiot. <sighs> Butler, hurry up with those drinks, you old snail. Yes, sir. Finally. Oh, Nick, watch this. <laughs> Rest of a fool, how could you do such a thing? I'm sorry, sir, I'm sorry. It was just Mr. W, he was trying to- He tripped me all- Whoa, 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 hey, whoa, whoa. I'll stop him right there before I have you fired. And you, Duffy, I knew you're mad because you got the scraps of my ex-wife. What did you just say? Because you got the scraps of my ex-wife. I don't need your ex-wife, mate. I got all my New York women. 
You think the newspaper will think the same thing? Laddie? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Calm down, James! Just calm down! Guys, relax! It's just a spill! You can buy a thousand more shirts if you wanted to! Or better yet, if your servant buy- Damn it, James! Have some respect! You're acting like a damn fool! You know what's up? At least my wife still wants to stay with me while yours is being swindled by some new money fellow named Gatsby. Pardon me? That was my hit, you scallywag. He had it coming talking about my wife like that. Might as well join in. Two hours late. Come on, Tom. It's time to go. Oh, screw you, James. You're not even worth my time. At least I didn't lose one million in a horse betting, you idiot. Oi, Secretary was a great horse. Who wants to order another drinks? Oi, laddie, right here. Hey, this round's on me, boys. Put it on Duffy's tab. My pleasure, sir. My wife's never gonna let me go out like this again. I even ruined her favorite shirt. Why? Well, I think you look alright. Just tell the truth and it'll be okay. I think I'll go to Versace after this and get a new. Tom, you gonna be leaving soon? Tom, it's time to go. Uh, five more minutes. You said that five minutes ago. It's time to go. I think we're gonna head out now. Right, off you go. And, uh, Butler? Yes, sir. This is for all the trouble we caused and for you to forget what we talked about. Why, I don't seem to remember anything. Maybe a cause of amnesia. <laughs> Good. Alright, come on, Tom. Oh, I gotta go. Get my shoe. Yeah. <sighs> Tell me it's not true. Tell me Daisy isn't with Gatsby. They're just friends. Why'd everything go down like that? It's like no one had any respect for one another. It's all in good fun. Who cares if clothes get ripped? Randy gets spilled or friends get lost. They're all replaceable by money. He was right. Money controlled everything in this world. It didn't matter if you were cruel, stupid, or a plain a-hole. Money could get you out of anything. And it did just that. No repercussions, no consequences. Money solved any and every problem. Maybe in our quest for this materialistic life, we lost something that essentially proved we were human.